Um, question for the floor. If you were to reduce your own individual carbon impact, what would you do? What are the best ways to do it? Yes. Not have children not fly, not eat meat and not drive cars. Oh, well, excellent. Any other, any other ones? Not use plastic. That's common. Eat babies rather than cows. Can't officially condone that, but... Um, Maybe go vegan, that's probably better. Um, yeah, um, so as someone has excellently said, um, have less children. Um, they're the number one um, contributors of carbon dioxide. Uh, fly less, uh, don't eat meat, don't drive cars, or if you are going to drive a car, drive an electric car. Um, but these are a lot of don'ts. These are a lot of sacrifices that we're asking you to make to do something good. But what about empowering someone to make better choices and to do something better? What about giving you the option to do something rather than to not do something? Um, so what can you do? And I think that there's a, re there's a bigger debate on whether it's down to the individual or whether it's down to the business or whether it's down to the government. Um, but actually, at this point, everyone needs to do something. Um, so, But as businesses... We believe that we're here to empower the individuals, our suppliers, our communities, everyone that can make a difference. And as a business, especially in the renewable sector, we have the expertise and the resource to say, hey, here's how you can make a difference using renewables. We're not very good at the sort of eating babies and stuff. You know, we stick to what we know. Um, but for renewables, we're the people to come to. Um, and this is why we're going towards things like we're the only small business, sorry, small energy supplier in Britain. Um, to sign the UN Global Compact. So we've committed um, our uh, sort of intentions and our actions towards the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which we talked about earlier. Um, and obviously renewable energy comes into that, but also a lot of how we work. So we have like an equal parental leave, whether you're man, woman, however you have your child, everyone gets the same leave. We also have unlimited paid holiday. That's pretty nice. Um, and all the things sort of, it all filters down into we only serve vegan food in the office. So there's a kind of the bigger, the bigger sort of thought process on that, on doing good and how you define it. So this is maybe not the step-by-step -step guide that it could have been, um, but this is called how to save a, the planet if you're, if you're a business and how you can empower everyone that you're, all your stakeholders to do good. So at Pure Planet, we kind of operate on the sustainable, smart, shared model. Um, I probably should tell you a little bit about Pure Planet, actually. Um, so we're a startup. We're about two years old now. And we were founded by the team that launched Virgin Mobile in the UK. So quite big dogs, big fish. And they sort of got to a point where they sort of like, well, actually, how can we do something really good? And so they kind of use their telecoms industry expertise and sort of what we can, this is exactly the same. We're selling an invisible product, sort of network connection, I guess. Let's do the same to energy. But the, the condition was, as they kind of worked through it on the back of the napkin, um, we'll only do it if we can sell green energy for less than brown. So that's, and that's true today. Um, we're really market competitive, um, green or otherwise. So ultimately we're sustainable. Um, this is our mission, um, to, to do this within our founders' lifetimes. And they're getting on a bit, so we've really got to, got to get going. Um, but to, yeah, to have a completely renewably powered Britain. And we accept that it's bigger than just the supplier. There's so many other stakeholders in this, from the individual all the way through to the national grid. Um, but, you know, we've got to, got to pull our socks up. Um, so it's about the planet. It's about the renewable electricity that we sell. So we sell... Um, electricity from wind, solar, and hydro, um, and all of our gas is carbon offset. There's just not enough green gas to, um, to supply all of our customers, but by sort of driving the demand, we'll get there eventually. The idea is that everyone goes onto electricity, and we don't need kind of old-fashioned gas boilers or anything like that anymore. We can go completely electric and then completely renewable. Um, but how, how do we do it? How do we market ourselves a sustainable business. I think in the world of greenwashing and, you know, sort of bamboo cutlery, why do you need bamboo cutlery? You could just have, to put a fork from the kitchen into your bag and that's great. You don't need this sort of travel thing. So there's, there's loads of um, distrust among the sort of green, um, green marketing at the moment. But there's also 
a bigger market than ever before for making the right, the right choice. Someone earlier mentioned Ecosia and how they've had a huge increase in tree planting and searches and users um, off the back of the Amazon rainforest. So there's, there's, and you know, David Attenborough and all of that sort of sphere means that everyone, it's, it's more prevalent than ever, ever before. Um, so we're really open, we're really honest, and our tariff has zero markup. Ooh. Um, so that means that you pay what we pay for the energy that you use. So we have every energy tariff is split into two. We've got your standing charge or what we call the membership fee and your use it's rate. And that um, sort of so the membership fee is all wrapped up in one and that's where our profit is. We have made no profit on your actual users rate, which is unique and which means we can be really genuine in how to reduce your energy usage because it doesn't hurt our profits. Um, and it also means that you know you're getting the best rate. Uh, we only have one tariff because why would different people pay different things? It's all the same. Um, and it's not if you happen to sign up at the deal at the end of August when it was a blue moon, you get a special price that we don't believe in it. Everyone should pay the same. Um, we're also, we, when we launched, we were completely at base. We don't have a phone number and we still don't have a phone number today. You can't call us. Um, and the, uh, the energy regulator Ofgem had a lot of issues with this originally. Um, it said they had to be, we had to be contactable by uh, whichever way the member wanted, and, but that included fax. So we kind of threw that back at them. It was like, find me an energy supply with a fax machine. They found one and was like, okay, maybe we need to rethink this. Um, so we've, we pushed for it, and yeah, we, st we don't have a phone number, but we do provide an excellent service. Our Trustpilot scores attribute to that. Um, we're excellent on Trustpilot and um, our member feedback as well. Um, and we do this by our, our website and our app and our digital presence. Oh, we also um, use some cool, like, clever machine learning behind the scenes and some sentiment tracking to kind of preempt what you want and also what we want you to do. Because if, if we want you to send a meter reading, it's better for everyone if you do, and it makes you a bit more accurate and that kind of thing. So these moons move around and change depending on the priority of what we want you to do. And it works really well. We've got one of the highest meter reading input rates in the industry. So through our customer service, without the sort of phone number, um, and actually you realize the last time you phoned your energy supplier was probably about three years ago if you had a problem. But there's also the, the consideration was, would you pay more to have the service of a phone? And we can't market it like that. Um, but if you actually had the option to say, well, it's going to cost you 50 quid more a year for the option to phone us, be well, no, I'll be fine. I'll message you. Um, but yeah, so in actuality, this is what I do. And this is what what? little pink guy, little light bulb. Um, and he is our chatbot. He's artificial intelligence powered, so he's always learning and he's on 24 seven. So it's very, it's a very small cost to us, but he's able to answer 60% of our customer service queries first time, which is huge. Um, and once we got over the sort of social behavior change of getting people to contact this way, it's so much easier than being on hold for half an hour and then talking to the per someone that doesn't know what they're talking about, talking to the next person and finally getting it sorted. This means that um, Wattbot can either answer it, or if he can't, you go through to our team, and it goes um, straight to the right person who's able to answer it. It's not just tech that we use to get people to do to do the sort of the right thing or to kind of um, encourage action. Um, so I, I manage all of our customer communications, including all of our emails and SMSs. And a really interesting thing that came out of the research was that people are way more likely to click a button, um, even if it doesn't say anything related to what you're doing. So um, in getting someone to log in, they'll go for click the big pink button rather than actually click the, the underline link. They're even more likely to do it if it's got an arrow. Amazing. It's also, there's a real important feel-good factor. Um, and there's a lot of, um, particularly sort of, uh, it's called hard green, if you're sort of the, the green piece of your messaging kind of, if, yeah, if you're really sort of negative and you're using emotion and guilt. Um, and that, that doesn't get anyone to do anything. Um, it just makes you feel bad about yourself. We've taken the opposite approach. We really like to feature good news stories and congratulate you for doing your bit. Um, someone that joins us for 
from a conventional fuel energy supplier will halve their carbon footprint for the average household. It's huge. It's way easier than, it's, a, it's equivalent to about seven flights from London to New York for the average household. That's a three-bedroom household. So rather than sort of, oh, do I go on that, that holiday to France? Do I fly? Well, I mean, you should also think about that. But being able to switch your energy supplier and halve that carbon footprint, cut out the seven flights to New York is, is really significant. And you should know about it and it should be celebrated. Um, and one way that we do this, how do we market an invisible product? Um, you can't see energy. And if I see another picture of one of those um, gas rings for a news article talking about gas prices increasing, um, that I've just completely switched off. But marketing an invisible product, there's, it's, there's loads of creative ways to talk about it. So if they have a household, you'll save about the same weight as a stegosaurus in CO2. It took us ages to find the right dinosaur. Um, and I now know a lot of dinosaur weights. Um, but yeah, it's about a stegosaurus. And that's great. And then you want to tell your friends. And you feel sort of that, that, that you've contributed to a bigger purpose, which maybe as humans, that's why we're here. Who knows? Um, so we also have a refer a friend scheme. You can refer friends and you both get Amazon vouchers in the future. That's also going to be bill credit or donate to a charity of your choice or donate to our fund for vulnerable customers. For people who are experiencing fuel poverty and don't have enough money to pay their electricity bill, um, you could opt for your refer a friend bonus to go into that. It makes us so much more human and it gives kind of a, a real feeling to the interface behind the app. Um, but it's all about people, and as it's been talked about earlier today, it's a really human-to-human -human interaction. Um, this is a mystic symbol for our community. Um, but yeah, so we're, we've got a huge community, um, I think driven by sort of the T-Mobile model or GIFGAF. Um, it's the same kind of um, thing and that we really encourage and really incentivize um, people to get involved in the community, talk about everything from off-topic to solar panels to charging electric vehicles to, um, you know, if they like the last email we sent them. Everything from that. And we have a surprisingly high number of people that spend over 16 hours a week in the community. Um, they're better at answering our questions that we get in and they do it faster. So it's a brilliant resource and really brings sort of energy to life. Um, what's in it? What's, why are we doing this? Why are we forcing sort of the social behavior change to go app based when most people don't really want to manage their energy account at all, let alone via an app? Um, it's building a foundation. And with every startup, you've got big goals, big dreams, big ideas, and big things that you want to achieve. So um, for Pure Planet, it's really future facing. Having an app where people engage with regularly, we know that most people. I think over 85% of people will send a meter reading via the app or via the account on the web once a month, which is huge. Um, and so if we can up that even more, then um, people are really engaging with their energy supply, energy efficiency, and energy savings. Um, and whether you care about whether it's how much it's costing you or how much you're saving in CO2 terms or how much you're saving in energy terms, um, there's something kind of relatable in it for everyone. But it's also giving us a platform to be vehicle to grid charging. Maybe it's using your electric car to charge um, at cheap times, or maybe it's selling back to the grid when it's um, more expensive um, and making money that way. Maybe it's um, using electronic signatures of appliances to reduce, um, so we can give you an app notification saying, oh, hey, your washing machine is using way more energy than we'd expect. Um, maybe it's time to get it fixed or swap out a new one, or did you accidentally put it on a really long cycle? Um, that kind of thing. Maybe it's, hey, you've left your lights on. Do you want us to turn them off for you? That'd be really cool. Um, and these are all things that it's m so much easier to do in the palm of your hand. You're not going to do it from if you've got to log into an account on your desktop um, or even phone someone up to do it. So it's kind of paving the way to be way more engaged about not just your energy, but how you use how you use your house and your vehicle and your car um, and your maybe even your wider community um, in sort of micro grid, micro grid selling and buying. So we're really setting ourselves up for this kind of future future thing. And with smart meters, I know there's probably not the favorite thing at the moment. They've got a lot of bad press, but the new generation of smart meters, uh, the capability is really cool and we can get monthly, daily, even half-hourly readings 
what your on what your and en- like what your energy usage is like um, and really build up a usage profile. It's being talked about earlier today, but you know that could be specific tariffs or that could be specific discounts or incentives to use energy at a time that helps us balance the grid. Um, because we saw that the problem is with renewables is that solar and wind and okay, well hydro is actually a lot more constant, but solar and wind are, are really um, if, if it's if it's not sunny, if it's not windy, we've got a problem. So really engaging people to use micro storage systems such as your electric car um, is really the way the way forward if we're going to make Britain powers 100% by renewables. So when talking about that feel good factor, if you're feeling good about it, you're way more likely to have time for it. Um, so if you're feeling good about your screaming child, um, you may see it as um, having time for your family. Or your screaming child on the plane, you may see it as having time for a holiday or having time to experience a new culture or a new place and feel good about it. Um, it's maybe taken for granted, but having whatever food, whatever time is a, is a real luxury and you might feel good about that. Or, you know, eating a whole chocolate cake, that's also fine. Um, having a private form of transportation, um, that's a real feel good and being able to get around. Maybe you're, maybe you think about using an EV, maybe you think about cycling. I cycled here today and it's incredibly hilly and I might get the bus back. Um, but you know, it's a real feel good and I have tired legs, but fe- yeah, feeling pleased with myself. Um, and having, um, unbelievable unlimited access to the internet is something that's very easy to take for granted but feel good and it leads on to all of the technology and capability that we're talking today um so that initial password kerfuffle um once you're in leads you to a lot of greater things and of course the thing that i'm saying you really should make time for is renewable energy um and i know you can't actually tap the button with the very clickable arrow um but I'd really, say, really recommend switching to renewables. I think you probably know who I'd recommend, but as long as it's renewable, you're doing your thing, um, halving or reducing your carbon footprint. Um, and tell a friend, help them do the same. Help them that, give, give them that smug feeling of switching to renewables um, and tell them about the Stegosaurus worth of CO2 you've saved. Thanks. I should say, if anyone's got any questions, fire away. Or if anyone wants to know more. Yes. You mentioned um, ideally getting rid of the, the, some of the gas boiler. Yes. Uh, central heating or heating, space heating, is a um, big subject. How does, does your company see that happening? Is that for heat? That's very pricey. Yeah, so electricity is about... 12, 13 um, pence per kilowatt hour, and gas is about 3.1 pence per kilowatt hour, depending on what region you're in. It's four times as much. Yeah, so it's four times as much to use electricity. But um, depending on what boiler you have and how old it is, your gas boiler might even be four times as inefficient already. Um, so you might end up spending the same, if not more, um, on your on your on heating. Um, so I think also with more efficient, with sort of modern housing, and I realise if you live in an old house, it's um, not great news for you. Um, but modern housing, you need a lot less electricity or energy to heat your home anyways. And um, having a gas supply and an electric supply is just going to cost you more. Um, so that standing, that standing charge you pay um, is kind of for the rental of the, the, the sort of the, essentially the transport um, of the electricity and the gas to you. Um, so you're going to pay, well, with us, you'd pay £108 a year just to rent that gas supply um, and to have that access. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's some spreadsheet calculations to get involved in, um, but it's, it's not just the cost of the upfront electricity. Um, and it's actually yeah, sort of the, obviously the environmental impact as well. But do you see that changing? I mean, uh, uh we're going to have more insulation and better quality housing and other things, but with regard to gas for heating, 
Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, electric, ele electric heaters are, are fitted as standard now. It's really unusual to get a new gas boiler fitted. Um, you have, it's quite um, specific, a specific application to have one done. Um, they're definitely on the way out. But it's, it's going to be sort of a 10, 15 year, 20 year transition. You think gas boilers are on the way out? Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah. But uh, obviously, that's my opinion. Uh, what challenges does Pure Plant face is when adopting uh, new customers? Like, is there some, you mentioned like people say that there's no time, that they have no time. But is, there, is there anything else that you think that might keep people from changing the energy supplier? Yeah, the, yeah, loads of, there's loads of reasons, uh, reasons why you wouldn't switch. Um, there are people that have been resolutely with British Gas for 20 years because that's what they've done, that's what they've always done. Um, and that's going to be a brand recognition problem. That's not getting our brand out to them enough. Um, there are going to be people that have chosen another renewable supplier. There are going to be people on a fixed tariff. Um, so a lot of tariff, ours is variable, so it goes up and down with the wholesale prices. Um, but a fixed tariff, it, you're kind of fixing it for a year and you probably have to pay a penalty if you leave early. Um, called an exit fee. We don't have them. Um, you can come and go as you please, but um, a lot of, especially fixed tariffs, will. Um, so that will prevent people from switching. It's just awareness as well. People don't really think about it. Um, and price <coughs> may be one of them as well. Um, yeah. We were in a, a workshop just like before lunch. Um, or was it after lunch? I know. Uh, that basically we learned that people only act you know, proactive, like act for, uh, for, for a solution or onto something if there's a crisis. Um, how, how, you know, we know there is a crisis because we were informed, but on like, you know, the daily lives, people, apart from like a hotter day here and there, they don't, they don't actually feel the daily lives, the difference, you know, the climate change, you know, is causing to the planet. So I don't think there is this sense of urgency of, of, of a crisis on, you know, on the daily, daily lives of people. And if they don't really care about the environment, like in the way that other people might, like how, and I don't, I mean, and I'm not expecting you to necessarily know the answer for that because, you know, you probably would be billionaire if you did. Yeah. Um, but like um, how to, to make people, um, to convince those people that might not really care, you know, what else can you offer apart from like showing that they are saving a stegosaurus of CO2? Yeah, um, so part of this is making it really accessible. Um, it's giving everyone the option to switch to renewables. Previously, it was really expensive and you had to pay pay a premium, like an organic label, um, sort of if something's organic or green or, or good, um, there's, a, there's almost a default higher price. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, that's part of why we've gone digital and have that very digital lean model. Um, and as we've grown, we've uh, I joined about a year ago and I'm employee number 29. Um, but we have now up to about 75 people. So we've more than doubled in size, but our customer base has increased by a thousand percent, which is huge. So sort of scaling that, the fact that we've been able to only double our team, but increase by so many um, customers means that we're really... What we're doing to be digital is really reducing our costs. So we're really price competitive and um, the market is really volatile at the moment. It's really fluctuating. Um, so we're not the cheapest at the moment, um, but we have been. Um, we're probably, it really depends on your usage and your region and there's a couple of other factors, but we're probably in the top 10, top 20, top 20 of the 70 or so suppliers to choose from. Um, so we're really trying to reduce that kind of, that barrier. So actually, if people might not care to, if you say, save a stegosaurus worth of CO2, save three tons. Um, but if you say, actually, we're 250 quid below the price gap, you'll save that against um, Eon or the big six or you British Gas, that kind of company. People like, oh, actually, I could do a lot with 250 quid. Or sort of the referral friend scheme, but like, oh, well, I'm not really bothered, but I have a friend who, who cares about that. And if you make... Um, it's 50 quid at the moment, but that's an offer, so you make 25 quid each time. Um, that's actually like a quite a significant um, way to make money as well. So there's, there's people always respond to the financial incentive and we get reviews, the, the sort of the trust pilot reviews that we get when we're really cheap compared in, comparatively. I always like, oh yeah, great app, fantastic service, love all of this. Don't talk about the money. And then when we're expensive, relatively, um, and like, oh, I just I hate this app. I hate the service, and it's funny. It's funny the kind of rose tinted glasses that money can put on it as well. So it's a very emotive topic, obviously, but it is it is a big um, option, a bit sort of a big consideration for a lot of people. 
Any more for any more? <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much.